Thank you guys all for joining in today. Uh, if you guys aren't aware, uh, every Monday at 3 o'clock p.m. Eastern Time, uh, we're nailing out two uh, Hedera Hashraf ecosystem uh, interviews. Um, we're going to do them on Twitter spaces. We were doing them uh, via Zoom and then uploading to YouTube, but we're going to start them on Twitter spaces and kind of create that feedback loop through uh, the Hedera Corner um, on Genfinity's uh, lighthouse.genfinity.io. Um, huge shout out to, uh, before we get started, pre-IPO, uh, our sponsor for the Guide to Series 65, as well as uh, Hashpack um, within our collaboration for facilitating out and streamlining these interviews. I think we'll get started. Uh, unless we have, I know we have Mao oh, yeah, up here too. Um, yeah, so today we're doing an interview with uh, both Patches and Orbis 86. Um, and, you know, I'll just kick this off. So, I mean, these are going to be more so to create a fee. I mean, a lot of people from, from the Hedera uh, ecosystem obviously probably knows who Patches is, probably knows who Orbis 86 is as well. Um, but I really want to uh, do these interviews in a way where we can kind of um, pull out shorts within the interview and create a feedback loop. Uh, if people aren't aware um, of what people like Patches are doing or Orbis 86 are doing in the ecosystem, uh, really kind of take a snapshot of kind of these Twitter spaces um, and just have great information. So I always like to start these with uh, maybe allowing, uh, you know, you yourself, Patches, to give a little bit of an overview of like your background in crypto and Web3. Um, you know, what got you interested into the space to start with? Yeah, actually, that's that is interesting. I don't think I've told that story. Um, you know, I've been a, you know, in technology vertical for a while. And that was my career path. Um, so I'd worked at a bunch of uh, different places building things with, with code. But what got me interested was a startup idea I had um, that required tokenization of data from uh, cannabis. And so um, <clears throat> there's a lot of data that could be utilized in understanding people's uh, consumption habits um, that could then be used as a better pinpoint of what, you know, distilled component of cannabis can help a person who is, you know, recovering from leukemia or something. So um, the need of documenting it publicly was important. Um, I, I got really far away from this, clearly. You know, now we make <laughs> punks and turtles and moons. But um, this, the, the idea was um, open sourced data on mainnet that shows different, um, you know, uh, normalized data of consumption habits of different people, ethnicities, geolocations, and then uh, an algorithmic way to best um, suggest through terpene profiles. So I, I was looking into different technologies to do that. And um, I got into Cardano pretty hard and that that's, that's what I thought I was going to go with. But uh, luckily someone sent me an email about Hedera and I, I dug into it pretty hard and uh, it achieved everything that I was really looking for, which is the quick speeds, um, the cheap uh, costs so that you could easily, um, on board someone who isn't of great means to do to do things and work with it and um it's been a it's been a very pretty you know cool journey over the last two years um building on this network and kind of finding uh finding ways to empower um developers and creators to utilize hedera to to meet their vision so I don't know if that answered your question. Yeah. It is a new piece of tidbit that I never brought up before. I'm pretty sure early on, whenever you and I were talking as well, I think that you said the first crypto that you ever bought was Doge, right? Yeah. Yeah, Doge. <laughs> so how, how, Doge so what was kind of the, <clears throat> was it kind of in a, in a similar time frame where, <clears throat> you know, buying Doge and then kind of exploring out other ecosystems when you, when you happen to learn about Hedera? Um, and what was that kind of? What was that process from, and you, maybe, hey, maybe you still hold Doge. I mean, I, I know that you're very kind of not, um, you're building solutions out on Hedera from, from you know, knowing enough about you, but you also aren't, you know, a total, you know, maximalist in any one ecosystem. So I guess since you did, you know, onboard into the crypto space with Doge, I'll ask, do you still hold Doge? Um, so I had, I, I believe I do. And I believe they're in my Doge mining pool. So I also have a Doge miner. I don't run anymore. 
Um, <clears throat> but I made a, a small little company called Sky High Doge. Um, <laughs> and uh, we were in the Doge community and uh, had a node. And, um, and then I, I also got into SHIB pretty, pretty big. I still love SHIB. I hold a really big bag of SHIB and Bone and Leash. Um, and I was just impressed with how that was like an open sourced technology that or an open source project that was taken over by some really smart devs that made, you know, the NFTs, they made the um, Shiba swap. Um, and it was just, uh, it was really cool to, to, to see a community uh, based direction that there wasn't really a leader. There were people who were the devs, but the, the leading, it was kind of like my first hit of like what a DAO could be or what a decentralized um uh, decentralized project could 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 exist as and learned a lot about how they manage the community from from existing in it um and then i was also into binance um small cap coins for like three four months uh, tried day trading small cap coins um thought there was an, a method there and then eventually gave up and was like i'll just i was actually build something instead of trying to make short flips and, and earn because it's just such a such a headache to research and go and then like you buy into something and then 10 seconds later it's a rug and you're like, all right, well, thank God I did all that research. Um, but yeah, so uh, eventually got into Hedera and then we was really interested because we came on, I started looking at it two weeks before the NFT protocol even went live. So we had like, an, I think an unfair advantage that we started building all of our tools after the protocol was, on mainnet and so people that were working with like fungible token nfts at the time uh had a had a lot of um rework and refactoring they had to do that we didn't so that was that was helpful too that we came at a, at a really good time yeah when you guys started um you know this is interesting to me to ask just because of the fact that you know knowing that you guys obviously have hcraft punks um which kind of led into turtle moon which kind of uh almost in tandem uh, at a similar time leading into HRAF IO. So I guess the question that I'll ask is I, I would normally ask, you know, what was kind of the uh, inspiration behind the project that you guys launched? But I guess I might phrase it um, as like a two part question. So what was the inspiration behind HRAF punks? And then at what point did you guys decide or did you decide um, alongside, you know, I know you've been working with friendly forever um, to build out additional, aspects of like utility because you know turtle moon deals in kind of like native d5 functionality i know it's based around um you know cute turtles and moon shells and things like that but if you if you dive under the hood there's some real functionality that's being built out in a in a, in a way that to use for, for decentralized finance as well as hcraft io so w did you know that you were going to start uh kind of d5 you know protocols for, through turtle moon when you launched hcraft punks or was it kind of a Hey, we launched this, and now it'd be really cool if we had these tools as well. I would love to hear the story around kind of how the the business aspect developed around um, fr from from creating the NFT project to kind of really branching out and developing more tools and services. Yeah, no, that's a really good question. Um, once I understood, like as a technologist, once I understood Hedera fully and had read the white paper, understood the governing council body, and you know, like you, once you put all of that data in and you understand the strength of this network, it was like, okay, I, I believe that Hedera is going to be a top five coin. Like it, everything that's here is, it, it just has a trajectory path that I can see that is going to be groundbreaking in global communication and technology. And so the HCraft punks was created in a way where we're like, we knew we didn't, we knew what we didn't know. So uh, HCraft punks, and, you know, when this was in our initial post, you know, we didn't, we, we came into this knowing HCraft punks is going to find the problem. Like Hedera has not tested scale. And again, like as a engineer, I understand even if you have the best technology in the world, things happen at scale that you cannot predict. And as it happens, you have to fix them and grow. And it's just like, it's an organism. You have to continually grow um, and grow it. And so we took the approach of let's make, at the time, there were really you know smaller NFT projects. It was the you know Go Mint was the only marketplace. And we're like, what if you took one of these punk projects, the 10K collection, um, you know something in that range, and bring it to Hedera? And what are all the problems you're gonna find? So we didn't say like we're gonna build a marketplace <laughs> like like a launchpad. 
we said we're going to build the you know hcraft punks and we chose 8192 because that's bits and i know people <laughs> hate that it's not a round number but i like it um so like we, we release them in five you know 512 which is also bits um or 1024 and then so we we have this giant collection and the first thing we found out was minting is hard right we had the corn ice punks that were supposed to be airdropped there's a thousand of them and minting them was really hard <laughs> at the time because you know the protocol just came out so we spent our time you know working and building a solution there and then we, we eventually created the first tooling that we put into the ecosystem which was turtle mint tools and so that was through you know hundreds of hours of work figuring out what does and doesn't work, getting it to a place that I felt comfortable releasing it. And then we released the beta eventually, which is, you know, where it's at now. It's like, hasn't been maintained in nine months. Um, Cause there's a lot of different uh, minting tools out there now, but uh, it was the first non code needed uh, tool that you could just download for your desktop and mint on Hedera. And so we, you know, that was also our, our focus is the, the ease of use, making this amazing technology that I believe is going to be a top five coin to be very, very easy to use. And so this was the first step in that direction. And then after everyone was minting, you know, everyone was selling them, you know, before secure trade, they were selling them an exact wallet with their QR codes. Um, the problem was no one could launch. And so we're like, okay, <laughs> you know, roll up the sleeves. Let's let's build something that, that can launch NFTs. And so we built a Turtle Moon Launchpad, and um, that's that's kind of that's been the ideology of of Punks from the beginning. Is like, what what are the problems on the network? Find them, build solutions, and and help the community grow and and build uh, together. And then um, you know we we got to the point where everyone could mint. That's great, um, but no one can get analytics on the chain. Or the graph, really, um, because it's so complicated with the with the old REST API, and so then we we started building HGraph IO internally just for us to use. And then as we as we dug in, we're like, oh my god, this is like night and day, um, you know, REST API to GraphQL. So we kind of spun up a business. Now HGraph IO is is a company, or we're doing consultant work with Swirls Labs. We work with NFTer. Um, work with Kabila app, you know, it's, it's been really great to, to see all these different methods that people use HFIO for and like how they're creative with it. Um, but that it, it's all, I guess, um, it's all coming to fruition. Like this, none of this was an accident. We knew, we didn't know exactly what we were going to do, but we knew that we wanted to be fundamental in building technology. That's going to ease people to use Hedera. That's going to allow them to create their vision we wanted it to be really nice user experience and smooth. Um, and then again, uh, you know, things like HGraph IO now, it's, uh, it's really getting to uh, empower people to do things where you don't have the clunkiness of the REST API. And it's just like, if you had all the data on Hedera that you wanted in any way, what could you build? And we're seeing some really cool stuff behind the scenes. Um, and yeah. I don't know. I always keep rambling. Cut me off. <laughs> um, I, you know, you you mentioned community growth. You mentioned ecosystem and network growth, um, and it's one of the things that we've certainly witnessed over the past, <clears throat> you know, year, year and a half, two years. Um, you know, one question that I think that I would like to ask from, from your guys' standpoint is, um, from the HGraph IO, from the Turtle Moon aspect, from um, everything that HGraph Punks is doing as well seeing that all of these other, um, you know, additional marketplaces uh, building out on Hedera, additional launch pads building out on Hedera, um, additional uh, farming and DeFi mechanisms building out on Hedera. Um, how does Turtle Moon and uh, HGraphio, how do you guys maintain a competitive uh, advantage within the ecosystem while also trying to cultivate um, network growth from like a co-opetition standpoint by working with other projects and trying to help where you can. So what does that, or what has that looked like for you guys so far? And how would you imagine that kind of evolving over time as well? Yeah, that's a, that's a really good question. Um, I think, you know, I think a really good example of how tight the Hedera community is, especially developers is when, you know, the, the dead pixels drop for, Obviously not WAG going as a, as planned. You know, fifty percent were actually minted to public when it was supposed to be one hundred percent whitelist. I think every launch pad was um, was you know just really understanding and uh, publicly showed us support. Adair Sentient, you know, Hash Guild, um, Zeus, uh, 
Um, now I feel bad. I started naming them. I'm like, I remember them all. Um, <laughs> and a peer, <laughs> just every, every launch pad really was just like, hey, you know, these things happen, um, you know, in a capitalistic, you know, dog eat dog world that would have been jumped on as a look at this, you know, these people suck. You should come to our launch pad. And it's just not that way. But even today, I saw that Hedera Sentient put up a new really cool feature that shows um, what marketplace the NFT is listed on. And uh, you can click the link and like go and see the, the dead pixel on Zeus to go buy it. And they're working with an NFT or to bring in analytics. So I, even though we have a lot of launch pads, I would argue that each of them have their own different thing. Um, or like a lot of marketplaces, like uh, they, they have their own angle. And I think there's a lot of room for growth um, in, in Hedera as we get bigger for these specific use cases or specific niche uh, that they're, they're trying to accomplish with their UI. With Turtle Moon in that light, um, we really want to be focused on building new stuff and not always, um, we kind of, we, we went for the aspect of more of a curated market that's slower with launches so that we could focus on building out farming, promo code minting, voting, auctions, music. Like, so we, we're not really only an NFT launch pad. We're, we're a, a services platform situation. And I think as we grow the network, that is where um, all of these launch pads will have their own, you know, slice. Like NFT has the best analytic tool um, on, the, on the network for anything that you would want to see. Like it, they did a breakdown of dead pixel holders it's great, like they get donut graphs of like how long like fifty percent of people have been holding for over three months, and like just really cool stats. And so, it, you know, and it, I'm not just saying that because they use HGraph.io; they have like a really cool front end and analytic platform. Um, so as as we grow, I think that's what's going to happen. We'll 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 still be able to support each other, and everyone's going to kind of find what voice they they have in the market and and build out that unique. Um, that unique solution in the direction they want. And um, I think, again, as we grow, the opportunity of get launching more projects is just going to go up because there's so many people um, that are going to come in. If we had one tenth of Solana NFT um, traffic, you know, that's like eight X of what we have today. And that's, um, that's not where we're going. We're going to, we're going to be the, you know, a hundred to, to 500 X where we are today. So um, it's really exciting to, to, again, be here so early, even though it feels like we've been here a long time um, and see where it all goes. But that, I think I've answered your question. That's how we that's how we see the market and where it go. Yeah, totally. Um, and I think, <clears throat> you know, we get into, um, you know, pretty heavy verbiage sometimes when we do these interviews. Uh, one thing that I would like maybe for you to explain um two people that may be interested in coming onto the Hedera network or into the Hedera ecosystem and building um, from a tool standpoint. So in a really simplistic way, which tools or, you know, what tools would be interesting to projects coming into the Hedera ecosystem uh, to utilize something like HGraph.io? Um, and, and how would that help a project? Why would a project, you know, for lack of a better phrasing, why would a project care to use HGraph.io, um, and how does that help them to streamline um, and, and query the network and pull data? Uh, sit on that for one second, because I will. I do. I have to give a shout out to NFT as well, because I've seen their data analytics from a market uh, marketplace standpoint, and they are insane. I know they leverage the service that you guys have right now, but they are they are above and beyond. You know anything else that I've seen? That's not to say anything bad about anybody else. I just haven't seen the type of data and analytics that they, they're able to pull and query from the network. So from a simplistic way, somebody coming over from a different ecosystem, you know, what's the easiest way to describe the services that HGraph.io offers and, and why would projects care to pay attention to what you guys are doing in the space? Yeah. Yeah. The easiest way to describe it is it's, it's all of the data on Hedera easily given to you without having to build, you know, a giant amount of application layer technology. This isn't the easiest way to say it. It's Hedera made easy. That's the easiest way to say it. It's, it's getting Hedera data easily, uh, any, any kind that you want. Um, you know, you can easily manipulate it. It's just uh, GraphQL is the underlying technology we've used to build it. And it's light years ahead of REST API. 
And because REST API is what, you know, it's the Hedera mainnet is the open source REST API. Um, it's just, it's much clunkier to try to get new data. It's much clunkier to uh, access different tables um, when GraphQL just allows you to query every table all at once if you wanted. Um, so it's, it's freeing in that way. But more specifically, if you're coming and using the EVM on Hedera, you know, we're talking with teams that it costs 50 cents every time to call a contract to get the reserves of liquidity pool. It's free if you call HGraphIO, right? You just, it's a query. So um, there's a lot of ways that it saves cost and it absolutely saves time um, because it is, it is quite quick as a service and it also can do aggregate data. So just like how you can see really cool aggregate information on NFT or um, the way that you can get giant pools of like, hey, how many NFT transfers were in the last day? You just get one number back from that API call. So it, it simplifies um, getting information and it allows you to really focus on what you're building and not how do I build this with Hedera, which is, um, which is really cool. And I, I'm, I'm very excited to be able to announce people that we're working with in the coming weeks. Um, we are go I am going to be at East Denver. HGraphIO will be there. Turtle Moon will be there and um, we're going to announce some stuff before then. And I'm, I'm excited about it.